Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. Methuselah lived a total of 969 years and then died. After he fathered Seth, Adam lived 800 years and had other sons and daughters. After the flood, Noah lived another 350 years. Now, I ask, how many people over 100 years old have you met nowadays? Cases where individuals reach this milestone are rare, and most often, they reach old age with weakened health and little clarity of mind. In a world where life expectancy is measured in decades, it's intriguing to discover how biblical figures like Methuselah, Adam, and others reached centuries of existence. Why did these people live so long? Is there any connection between their longevity and the pre-flood era? Many believe that the Bible is the only source addressing the longevity of people in antiquity, who lived for centuries on end. However, the reality is that various ancient civilizations, documented in inscriptions and ancient books, also describe and depict ancestors who enjoyed a centenarian life. So, what is the truth behind the remarkable longevity of ancient inhabitants of the Middle East, Africa, and other regions? In this video, I will delve deep into this intriguing mystery. Please show your support with likes, subscribe to the channel, and enjoy this content. The mystery of peoples who lived centuries and centuries, because they lived so long. The Bible, in the book of Genesis, chapters 4 and 5, presents some impressive ages of biblical characters that may seem absurd in today's context. People living 200, 300, 500, 700, and even 960 years were common before the flood, something that may sound crazy to many people today. However, that was the reality of the pre-flood world. A prominent example of longevity in the Bible is Methuselah, mentioned in the book of Genesis. According to the narrative, Methuselah lived an astonishing 969 years, becoming the oldest man mentioned in the Bible. His long life is often considered a symbol of patience and perseverance, although the exact reasons for his longevity are subject to various interpretations. Adam, the first man, is described as having lived 930 years, while Noah, known for building the ark, reached the age of 950. The Bible not only records their advanced ages but also highlights their connections to significant events, such as the flood. Interpretations of these stories range from symbolic explanations to more literal approaches. The long lives of biblical characters are often associated with spiritual and moral lessons. Some traditions interpret these narratives as symbols of wisdom, patience, and the importance of a life dedicated to God. Other views see these stories as symbolic representations of broader cycles of time. The narratives of longevity in the Bible can present both theological and scientific challenges. From a theological perspective, the stories can be interpreted as allegories, while from a scientific standpoint, extreme longevity is incompatible with our modern understanding of human biology. There are various interpretations and theories seeking to explain why people reached the age of 900 before the flood. Even after the event, human longevity decreased significantly. However, shortly after the flood, we still see people living up to 400 years, which also seems absurd in today's context. Additionally, in the ancient Egyptian king's list of Turin, we find some interesting parallels with an ancient Egyptian text written in Hieratratic script. This text presents surprisingly elevated ages for some Egyptian rulers. According to Manetho, the oldest king of Egypt was Narmer or Menes, usually dated around 4400 BCE, with a remarkably long reign and life. This information is intriguing, especially when confronted with archaeological findings indicating that many ancient Egyptians had relatively short lives. However, there is evidence that some ancient Egyptians enjoyed remarkably long lives, living for many, many years. An intriguing curiosity about the first king of Egypt is the similarity between the names Menes or Narmer and the name Mizraim who is the son of Ham and the founder of the Egyptian people, according to ancient Jewish tradition. Besides the ancient Egyptians, other civilizations such as the Sumerians, Assyrians, 
Akkadians, and Babylonians also mention in their famous king list some rulers with incredibly long lives. This theme is not only present in the Bible but is also found in sources from Sumerian, Babylonian, Akkadian, Syrian, and Egyptian cultures. These sources recount similar stories about individuals who supposedly lived up to 900 years. The Sumerian kings list records not only the location of royalty and some official rulers but also the duration of their reigns. It is believed that the right to royalty was granted by the gods and could be transferred from one city to another. While some kings on the list are considered purely mythical, others are accepted as real historical figures. The duration of some reigns is remarkably long, reaching excessively large numbers in some cases. In the list, we find a single mention of a woman who became a ruler, called in Sumerian Kyugbao de Kish. She is recognized as the tavern keeper, and her reign is described as lasting about 100 years. To reign for such a long time, it would be necessary to live for many, many years. In the list of kings, rulers, ancestors, or even deities before the flood, they are often considered legendary, mostly seen as deities. A particularly surprising aspect is the longevity attributed to them. For example, in the list, we have Alulan, who supposedly reigned for an incredible 28,800 years, a number that may seem absurd. What draws attention, similar to the cases of Egyptian kings or ancestors, is that many of them are described as having lived between 670 and 960 years old. Some examples include Kilasinabal, who would have lived 960 years, Nangislisma with 670 years, Enterana with 420 years, Babam with 300 years, Huanam with 840 years, Kalibum with 960 years, Kalyumum with 840 years, and so on. These ages are remarkably similar to those recorded in the Bible for people who lived before the Flood. Some misconceptions suggest that immediately after the Flood, people were limited to living only up to 120 years, but this is a misunderstanding. In reality, the number 120 mentioned in the Bible refers to the time God determined for the Flood to come upon the earth and destroy the world, not to the life expectancy of people. This incorrect interpretation results from confusion in understanding the biblical context, as the 120 years is directly related to the duration before the flood, not to a limitation on human longevity after the event. Substantial evidence regarding this theme, not just one, but several pieces of evidence, is observed in genealogies describing various individuals shortly after the flood. These individuals, mentioned in various biblical passages, lived well beyond the often cited 120 years. Some of these biblical figures include And Arphaxad lived 35 years and begot Shelah. After Arphaxad begot Shelah, he lived 403 years and begot sons and daughters. And Shelah lived after he begot Eber 403 years, and begot sons and daughters. And Eber lived 34 years, and fathered Pelek. And Eber lived, after he begot Pelek, 430 years, and begot sons and daughters. These examples, found in Genesis chapter 11, are just three among many, suggesting that the first generation after Noah's sons and grandsons lived up to 400 to 430 years of age after the flood. This represents a significant decrease compared to the lifespans before the flood when people lived up to 900 years. It is also essential to consider the different perceptions of time, days, and years among the diverse peoples of the Middle East region. Each group had its own calendar, counting days, months, and years in distinct ways. The Canaanites, Israelites, Babylonians, and Persians, for example, had diverse temporal views. This diversity in calendars and time perceptions may influence how these ages were recorded, as the counting of days was not uniform among different cultures. It is true that there were various linguistic and cultural differences, as well as differences in beliefs, especially regarding calendars and time perception. A common explanation for the longevity of people in ancient times, both before and after the flood, includes factors such as the quality of nutrition and the reduced incidence of diseases. 
In the past, people had healthier diets, drank water from pure sources, engaged in physical activities by traversing mountains and deserts, and led more active lifestyles. Additionally, the diseases that afflict the modern world, such as cancer, were less prevalent or even non-existent in those times. The Earth's atmosphere is also pointed out as a factor, suggesting that people received more oxygen and, consequently, lived longer without experiencing accelerated aging. Other theories exist, such as an explanation related to the genetics of humanity's patriarchs, the sons of Noah, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Tradition indicates that Noah lived to be 600 years old, and the assumption is that his sons likely lived to that age or at a maximum of 700 years. As there are several theories and interpretations on this topic, it is clear that longevity in ancient civilizations is multifaceted and subject to several explanations. Leave it in the comments, which theory do you believe in? I hope you enjoyed this video. Everyone stay with God and see you soon.